thanks. So thank you for inviting me uh, to this uh, 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 very nice uh, uh, series of lectures. Uh, I've seen many of the other speakers are, are talented researchers in their own field. So let's see if I'm also managing to to live up to the uh, to this. So today I was asked to talk about pressure cryptography, pressure cryptographic systems. But to me, this uh, 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 is uh, part of a larger research team, which is the one on secure multiparty computation. So I see, I see this as a gentle introduction to threshold cryptography and secure multi-party computation. And my name is Claudio Orlandi, and I work at the Cryptography and Security Group at uh, Oz University. And the research I will describe in these slides is, has been funded by a number of agencies that are acknowledged here. So the example I like to start with is this of online poker. So let's suppose that you're playing, you want to play poker online. So what you're going to do today if you do this is that you know, it's going to be a bunch of players. And they're all going to connect to some central servers. And the central server is going to pick cards for the players and then deal them out. And then you can play poker. And then, you know, it's a mix of uh, uh, skill and luck. And then you can hope to, to win the game. Unfortunately, I mean, we are cryptographers, so we're paranoid. And so why should we trust this central server to, to do things properly? Maybe the central server is controlled by some pirate. Maybe this pirate is uh, a, a friend with some of the pirates who is play playing this game. And therefore, then this Pirate is going to program this central server to give very good cards to, to, to his own friend and, and bad cards to everyone else. And then we play and we lose money and we don't like to lose money, so we would like to avoid this. So secure multiparty computation, or in general, the, the, the area of research that I'm going to describe today is the area of research that allows to take any central point of failure, like these servers in this example. This is like a single point of failure for you know uh, uh, security or, or fairness of this game or whatever you want to call it. And then instead of having a single point of failure, to take this and distribute it into like somewhat like small pieces. And instead they have every participant in the protocol run somewhat like a piece of this central server. And, and this should be done in a cryptographic protocol such that, you know, even if, if uh, 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 sorry, even if, if uh, some fraction of these participants are corrupted and are acting maliciously, then the overall uh, situation is the same as if you had a trusted third party running the, the poker game for you. So you can imagine all each of these uh, little, uh, you know, pieces of a computer is a, is a computer program that runs some cryptographic protocol together with the other one. So in general, this is the area of uh, research of secure multiparty computation. And, and so typically, I mean, what we want to achieve is that, uh, you know, there is an ideal world in which there is some trusted third party that computes some function for you. You know, Alice and Bob, in this case, you have two parties, they have some private input X and Y. They can give these inputs to the trusted third party and the trusted party can compute some arbitrary function of their inputs and then give the answer back to them, F of X, Y, in this case, to both of them. And what we want to do is we want to replace this single this trusted third party with a cryptographic protocol where now Alice and Bob will exchange messages, which are somewhat based on their inputs X and Y. But these messages are encrypted, so they're some kind of gibberish. So, so you know, uh, 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 hopefully they don't reveal any information about X and Y other than the information which is uh, implicitly revealed by the, 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 the inputs X and Y, by the output of the function F of computer on X and Y. And I mean, in the 80s, uh, you know, if you went back to the 80s in the first uh, papers on secure multiparty computation, people would tell the story of this uh, uh, cryptographic dating where Alice and Bob, they want to find out if they, if they like each other and if they want to go out on a date, but they're both very shy. So Alice doesn't want to say to Bob that uh, she likes him first because what if he rejects her and vice versa. So, so the idea is that maybe, you know, Alice and Bob using secure multiparty computation could compute whether they both like each other. Uh, uh, so in this case, you know, the input of each part is a bit, it's zero, it, it's one if I like you and zero if I don't like you. And then the trust, you know, and then the cryptographic protocol should compute the product of the two bits, right? So, so now if both parties like each other, X and Y are both one, both parties learn one. So they learn that they like each other and they can go on a date. But, uh, uh, you know, if, if at three, you know, if Alice input is zero, then zero times uh, uh, anything is zero. So Alice learns zero and she learns nothing about Bob's input. Um, and and of course, I mean, uh, uh, you know, this when when you know when when in the eighties or in the nineties or even in the early two thousands, we would tell this story. This sounded like you know a, a you know a, 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 a you know a silly example, right? But we all know now that these days there are you know companies like Tinder, which essentially work like this trusted third party, uh, and do the exactly this for you, right? They collect uh, uh, information from from everyone, and and then they uh, tell you if you like each other or not. And of course, this somehow shows that uh, users and people care about privacy, right? But they don't care about privacy versus Tinder. They care about privacy versus the other party. So they care about not leaking to the other people that, you know, that, that uh, they, they don't want to let, Alice doesn't want to let Bob that, that uh, 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 she likes him unless he also likes her. 
but uh, uh, it seems that people have no problem uh, revealing all of their sexual preferences to Tinder, and God knows what Tinder is going to uh, do with this information in, in 20 years from now, right? Uh, 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 so, so you know, uh, cryptographers instead would like to replace all of this kind of trusted third party that collect information from from users with cryptographic protocols, and 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 we can do that. So, so you know, maybe we should be doing that. Um, so MPC is not just, you know, again, a, a matter of, of uh, uh, you know, academic research. There are like uh, uh, projects, uh, uh, and this is just a few examples of projects that that use MPC cumulative capacity computation towards the social good to 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 help people, uh, 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 you know, join data and, and compute useful information on that. So the first example of an MPC which was done in real life is uh, uh, from uh, uh, 2008 uh, uh, in uh, uh, Denmark where uh, MPC was used to, to uh, um, determine the price of uh, uh, some uh, 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 rights to produce uh, 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 goods, in this case, sugar beets, uh, and to find this, this, this uh, balance point without having to, to reveal to each other uh, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, 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 how much people were willing to buy and sell for. And this has impacts because you know, how much you're willing to buy and sell for reveals information about your economy. In, in Estonia, there is a company called ShareMind, and they have done uh, multiple uh, projects with, with uh, local authorities in Estonia, for instance, to compute uh, 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 statistics about student dropouts. And in this case, you had university, which had data on, 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 on students, and then the tax authority, which has data on, on uh, uh, the income of, of uh, uh, the students. And by, by law, I mean, this com the, the university and the tax authority are not allowed to join their data because we have privacy regulations. But using secure multi-party computation, uh, you know, entities which might not be adversarial, but just prevented to share information from each other because of, 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 of privacy regulations, they can now, you know, join their data and compute useful information based on that. And then finally, uh, uh, or not finally, another example is in Boston, there was a project uh, uh, where uh, private companies shared information Using MPC, they use the, the, the information about salaries for their employees to compute the gender gap, the, 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 the gap in, in wages between men and women. And this is, of course, something that companies would not be willing to do unless they knew that the computation was done in a private way, because information about salaries of one's employees is sensitive information. But you know, using MPC, this was, was enabled. Um, one special example of, of secure multi-party computation, which is also what I was asked, been asked to talk today, is threshold cryptography. So, so Threshold cryptography is, is, uh, can be seen as a special example of secure multiparty computation, where secure multiparty computation is used to, to deal with uh, uh, key management. So in this case, the uh, threshold cryptography can give you like some interesting trade-off between security and availability, for instance, in, in, in uh, cryptocurrencies and wallet management. So, so on the left side, you see a screenshot from one of you know, the beginning of the, uh, uh, Bitcoin. Some, some TV host on, 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 uh, in the US was showing how you can uh, give uh, 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 bitcoins as a present to someone else, and you know they printed this QR code and they were showing this on live TV. And then someone, you know, that was watching this this broadcast, they actually took a, a, a picture of this QR code while this the, the thing was going online, right? And and they managed to steal the money even before the the, the host on TV in the TV show was doing uh, uh, was able to finish the the, the the transaction. And this shows that it's very important, right? That that you know you keep your secret key very secret, right? I mean uh, it's you know, in, in, in cryptocurrencies, you know, uh, ownership of the secret key is equivalent to ownership of the money. And you cannot call the bank afterwards and say, hey, they stole my money, give it back, right? So if the money is gone, it's gone. At the same time, you don't want to keep your key too secret. And on the, on the right hand side, you can see one of the many stories of people who have lost all of their Bitcoins uh, because they had stored their secret key on a single hard disk or on a single computer, right? And when this computer failed or was lost, then they lost access to their funds and they lost access to all their money. Um, so the, the main idea of threshold cryptography is that you can take the secret key uh, uh, that controls your, you know, your funds or maybe uh, some other important, uh, uh, you know, your identity, your funds or some other resource. You can take the secret key and you can split it into pieces. So in this example, you put three pieces, one on the computer, one on the iPad and one on the phone. And, and this is done in such a way that one of, if the adversary gets access to only one of these three shares, let's say the adversary installs uh, uh, some, some, virus, uh, some virus on your computer, and they manage to steal the share which is on your on your laptop. Uh, even if they steal this one share, they learn no information about your secret key, and therefore you know you're safe. Uh, um, at the same time, uh, you do this in such a way that any two shares are enough to to access the resource. So so even if you lose your phone or you know your phone uh, falls into a swimming pool, uh, uh, then you know having the access to the other two devices is enough to reconstruct uh, 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 the secret to 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 produce signatures 
and to uh, uh, and to therefore access your your resources. So, so foundation of the all of all of this uh, research is is from the eighties and the nineties. But all of this has been uh, uh, interesting. This technology has has uh, uh, heavily increased in the last decade due to interest in blockchain. And 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 there are many companies around the the, the globe uh, working on with these technologies. Uh, 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 and, and some of them, and many of them have been recently acquired by larger companies because this is really a crucial technology uh, 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 for, for secure uh, 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 key management. All right, so so this was the introduction. Now let's start to, you know, with the time we have left to to try to have some uh, uh, some idea of how these things work, right? And, and I have brought only very simple examples in this presentation, and at the end, I'm going to give you pointers if you want to know more. So, so the first uh, and you know simplest example of secret sharing you can imagine is uh, you know some kind of three out of three secret sharing, uh, and we're gonna do like some kind of linear three out of three secret sharing. So suppose that you have some secret, and your secret is uh, uh, x, uh, and uh, uh, and is some integer in some range between zero and n minus one. So this could be your secret key, or can also be something else, right? Uh, uh, can be any data that just represented as an integer here. So the way you can uh, uh, secret share this, this uh, secret is by picking three random integers, x1, x2, and x3, from the same range, 0 uh, to n minus 1, such that the sum of these three random numbers uh, uh, gives x. Right. So x1 plus x2 plus x3 modulo m gives you x. So, so if you think about this, right? Uh, 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 so here, x can only be recovered if you have all of the three shares. So I mean, if I remove any of these three shares, uh, uh, then uh, I have zero information about the secret. I mean, if, if x3 gets lost, right? I mean, uh, uh, for any essentially for any possible value of x3, I get a different value of x. So, so you know, even if one share is gone, then then you know uh, uh, there is no information left about x. Uh, um, and and if you have, of course, if you have all of the three shares, you can reconstruct the secret by just adding and taking the modulo m. Uh, so this is great for privacy, right? I mean, you have now a share and it's in three, you, you to put a secret, you, you split it in three location and, and, you know, the adversary can only steal the secret if he breaks into all three locations. Uh, but it's bad for availability because, I mean, you know, if one of these locations is lost, then you lose your secret. And, and uh, you know, in secure multiparty computation in the literature, we like to write uh, uh, these, uh, uh, a situation like this as X in a box. So we like to put uh, the secret into square brackets and and that looks like X is inside the box, right? X is somewhat protected. It's it's a it's an, ob an object which is now protected, encrypted. I mean, it's not encrypted, right? But you know, it's secret shared. No one can see it. Um, so okay, since this is good for privacy but bad for availability, what we can do is that we can uh, uh, um, well. So wait before that. So so uh, uh, this is a linear secret sharing, which means that if you have two shares, uh, uh, you have a secret sharing of X and a secret sharing of Y. Uh, then it's very easy to do linear operations on them, right? So, so if you have a secret sharing of x, meaning that uh, uh, party one, party two, party three have x one, x two, and x three, such that their sum is equal to x modulo m, and then you also have a secret y, such that y y plus y two plus y three is equal to y modulo m. Uh, uh, then it's very easy to compute a secret sharing of z, which is the should be the sum of x plus y, right? So, I mean, essentially everyone just locally adds their own shares modulo m. And 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 you know since uh, here addition uh, uh, is commutative this way or that way right uh, 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 if you take it z one plus z two plus z three you get x plus y modulo m which is exactly what you wanted so so it's very easy to do linear operation on this sharing which shows you that it's possible to compute on on these uh, uh, secret share values um, again so if you wanted to to get better availability right one easy way is 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 to use replicated two out of three secret sharing. So we're going to do exactly what we did before. Uh, uh, so we're going to take x, and we're going to pick three random values, x1, x2, and x3, such that their sum is equal to x, modulo m. Um, but now what we're going to do is that we're going to give two shares to each party. So, so now party 1 gets x1 and x2, now party 2 gets x2 and x3, and now party 3 gets x3 and x1. So it should be clear from this that uh, uh, now, uh, 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 as soon as you have two parties, any two parties can reconstruct the secret, because any set of two parties knows all three shares. Uh, and you should also be clear that if the adversary corrupts any one party, any single party, then they have no information about the, the, the secret. Because for instance, if party three gets corrupted, right? Party three does not know X2. So, so you know, so, so there is no information about X in X3 and X1. Uh, and this is very nice because now you have a scheme which is, you know, meaningfully uh, uh, both private and also gives you this kind of availability that, that you know, if you lose one uh, party, then you can still continue computation. Or you can you don't lose your secret key you don't lose your bitcoins uh, uh, um, and this scheme is still linear which means that you can still do computation on the secret share value I mean essentially now everyone will locally add 
both of their shares, right? Um, but you know, these kind of replicated secret sharing scales very, very poorly with the number of parties. Uh, so, so you know, it, here every party has two shares, but already, at, you know, if you had a scheme where you wanted to have uh, five out of eleven parties, meaning that any five parties should be able to reconstruct, should be like something like two hundred ten shares per party, which is uh, not very good. So, so uh, uh, you know, a secret sharing scheme, a very famous secret sharing scheme that that uh, solves this problem is Shamir's secret sharing scheme. So with Shamir's secret sharing scheme, you you uh, um, we're now going to have a model which is going to be a prime uh, 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 because we want every element to be invertible. We want to work in a finite field. We need inversion, so so we're going to work modulo prime. Uh, and now, if you want to share a secret x, and this x is an integer between zero and q minus one, what we're going to do is that we're going to take a, a, a polynomial f such that uh, uh, f of zero evaluates to x, and 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 otherwise f is a random polynomial. So we're just going to pick a bunch of random coefficients. Uh, uh, so that f is a random polynomial that happens to intersect the y-axis at x. And now the share that you get to give to party i is f of i, so the polynomial evaluated at the point corresponding to the identity of the party. So here, party 1 gets f of 1, and party 2 gets f of 2, and party 3 gets f of 3. Um, and what is nice here to notice is that the number, the, the amount of data that every party gets is independent of the threshold of the scheme and the number of parties. So, so each party in the scheme, uh, in Shamir's secret sharing, only receive. I mean, if the secret is 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 a number between zero and q, every party only gets a number between zero and q as as the share, um, which is of course much much better than before. So in this example, what we did is that we took a random polynomial of degree one. So this is just a line, and I mean now I'm representing this line as a line uh, uh, because it's easier to to show it on a slide. But of course we are doing computation modulo q. So, so this line is is it? I mean, would be like a super ugly, you know, a collection of points in a Q times Q grid. But but it's nicer to to represent it as a line because uh, it might give you the intuition of what actually is going on. But remember that, of course, when you do this, uh, when you do secret sharing, you're not working with real numbers. You're working with modular integers. So so you know, uh, uh, it's not going to look like a line, right? So, so, so in this example, we're going to take a random polynomial of degree one. Uh, uh, so a line uh, which is the, where the question is simply x plus r alpha, where alpha here is the uh, variable in the polynomial, and r is some random coefficient that, that gives you the slope of the line, and x is the point at which the line intersects the y-axis. And again, yeah, p1 gets f1, and p2 gets f2, and p3 gets f2. So if you think about it, and, and you know the, the, the picture here helps us uh, 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 visualize this, right? Since f of alpha as the polynomial f of alpha is degree d, in this case, 1, any set of d plus one parties, in this case two, can reconstruct x. So, so in our example, you know, uh, any two parties from, you know, if you take any two points, there is a single line that passes through these two points. So any two parties can reconstruct the secret by identifying the line that goes through their shares and, and reconstruct the secret x. Um, at the same time, it's really nice that any set of at most d parties has absolutely no information about x. So in this example, we take Alice and, and her own share f of one. And, and since she only has a share, you know, there are essentially Q different uh, lines that can pass through this uh, point. And each of these lines will intersect, uh, you know, the, 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 the y-axis at different places. So from Ali's point of view, you know, given this share, she has, uh, 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 from her point of view, the secret might be X, but could also be X prime or X prime prime. So, so she has no idea which of these is the right uh, uh, share. She should be, uh, 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 the corresponds to, 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 to her point. Right. Uh, so Shamir's secret sharing is is, uh, um, uh, is still a linear secret sharing scheme. Um, so so addition can therefore still be performed locally. And if you think about it, right, in the example, in this example, we have two polynomials, which are two lines. Uh, so we first secret share x using the line x plus r alpha, which is visualized here. And then we share y using the line, which is y plus s alpha, which is this line here, right? And then if, if the parties want to compute a secret sharing of x plus y, everyone can simply locally add their own shares. So p1 computes f1 plus g1. This defines uh, point h1 on a new polynomial. Uh, party 2 adds f2 plus g2 and gets h2, and party 3 does the same. And this now defines three new points uh, 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 on a new polynomial. And, and uh, of course, while we do the addition, we don't increase the degree of the polynomial. So, so uh, uh, the sum of these two lines will still be a line. And this line will happen to intersect the y-axis on, on the point z, which is equal to x plus y, right? So, so, so we can still do, do additions locally. Um, 
and in fact, linear secret sharing is already enough to to perform, uh, you know, threshold, uh, uh, you know, to to enable threshold cryptography for simple uh, 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 signature schemes like the BLS signature scheme. So in this slide, I'm going to give you, you know, very quick uh, 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 recap of the BLS uh, signature algorithm, which is a signature scheme which is very popular because it uses, uh, 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 especially in the, in, for threshold implementation, because it's all it's, it's completely linear. Um, and and uh, you really don't need to know much about elliptic curves and pairings, but of course, if you do that, that will uh, help a lot. Um, if you don't, you can just need to live with the uh, live with me at the abstraction level. I also don't understand elliptic curves and bilinear maps, so 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 I only I you know to me this is just a nice interface that I can use. So 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 you know if it works for me, maybe it also works for you. So the ingredients of BLS are a bilinear map. So this is a map that maps uh, uh, element of two groups. Uh, 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 this maps E that maps element of two groups into a third group, a target group. And it's a bilinear map. So it has the property that if you pair this element X times P and this element Y times Q, where here X is as X and Y, so the lowercase letters are, are scalars, whereas P and Q are, are you know, group elements or points on an elliptic curve, it uh, doesn't really matter. But you know, if you take uh, uh, X times, if you pair X times P and Y times Q, uh, 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 what you get is the map applied to p times q raised to x times y. So, so you have this 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 uh, 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 bilinear property where you you get this uh, 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 this nice property here. And all the three groups, so so you know both the the origin group and the third group are prime order group of order q. And we're gonna write the the, the, the you know the the base groups in additive notation uh, uh, because uh, it fits it's nicer on the slides. Um, and we also need to use a cryptographic hash function, something like uh, that we're going to call H, which maps messages into the first group of this uh, 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 map. So then the BLS signature scheme is very simple. The secret key is just a random value between 0 and Q minus 1. And the public key is uh, uh, Q uh, uh, times this secret key. If you're used to, you know, to work with uh, multiplicative notation, this is just like Q raised to the SK, right? Uh, but uh, you know, that shouldn't matter. Uh, um, and we have, of course, we assume that, that the discrete logarithm problem is hard, so that, that given Q and the pub, given the given the public key and Q, it's hard to find the secret key. Um, so signing is very simple. Sign, to sign, you just hash the message into the group using this hash function M, uh, H, and then you multiply by the secret key, and that gives you the signature sigma. And to verify the signature, you just uh, uh, accept if you if pairing this signature together with Q. Uh, uh, is the same as pairing uh, uh, the hash of the message with the public key. And uh, you could verify that using this bilinear relation, these two things are, are uh, uh, the same when you are signing correctly. I will not talk about why this signature scheme is secure, but instead I will jump into how this signature scheme can be made threshold. So, so if you want to make BLS uh, uh, threshold, if you want to thresholdize uh, BLS, it's, it's, it's very easy. So, so if you want to, uh, you know, when you want to perform key generation, um, sorry, this should be the secret key. Uh, let me not uh, try not to confuse you too much. So, so when you uh, when you want to do key generation, I mean, essentially everyone could simply locally uh, uh, sample a share of the secret key, right? And that defines implicitly a secret key, which is the the sum of the three uh, shares. And then uh, you could compute the public key as the secret key times uh, uh, Q. Uh, like for instance, everyone could do it locally, and then you could add this all of this together. And, and you know we can use the nice notation from before, so we can write compactly this the, the, the situation in which we have three shares of the secret key as just SK in a box. If you want to then uh, uh, sign uh, a message using this you know threshold version of the uh, of the signature scheme, uh, this becomes very simple. Essentially, every uh, uh, party which has some share SKI can simply compute uh, uh, the hash of the message and then. Uh, multiply by the scalar SKI, which is the share of the secret key. Uh, and that gives like some partial signature sigma I. And, and of course you can write this uh, uh, with the box notation that shows that, that you know, the secret sharing scheme is linear, which means that you can apply, you know, this, this uh, secret key on uh, shares onto this hash of the message to get shares of the, of the signature. Uh, and then you can combine the shares, these this shares of the signature simply by adding them together. And this gives you like a, a, a final signature. And this, uh, uh, you know, then, you know, if the original signature scheme verifies, this also verifies as well. 
And now this is very nice because, you know, instead of having the secret key in a single place where the adversary can steal it or where you can lose it, you can actually manage to split the secret key into three places. And, and you know, now the adversary has a much harder time trying to steal your money. Um, and this generalizes to any number of parties and any threshold and with any linear secret sharing schemes from, from you know, from the previous slide. So, you know, I've now done this with additive secret sharing scheme, but, you know, I guess uh, you can imagine yourself doing this then with the replicated secret sharing scheme or with Shamir secret sharing. It's all in, in all cases. This is just some local, uh, some linear operation. Um, with some caveats, this can also be used to thresholdize any signature scheme in which the secret key is only used in a linear way. And this includes, for instance, RSA signatures. The caveat here is that the group order is unknown. So when you do the secret sharing, you don't know what the modulo is, but you can, uh, uh, you know, you can solve that. Or SNR signatures, uh, uh, which we uh, will not cover. Um, Something I wanted to talk a little bit about is ECDSA. So ECDSA is uh, one of the most popular uh, signature schemes uh, uh, used in practice uh, for some historic reasons. Uh, um, and this stands for uh, elliptic curve digital signature algorithm. And uh, it somehow, I mean, uh, uh, it is very, very popular and it's used everywhere. And at the same time, it's very hard to, to implement in a threshold way. And I wanted to give you a feeling for why it's hard. So, so in the ECDSA uh, signature scheme, what you do is that you, you uh, 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 to sign using the secret key as K, you pick some random uh, 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 nonce, some random uh, uh, ephemeral key K, and then you compute this K times P, which is some point on elliptic curve. Uh, then for some reason, you have to uh, take one of the coordinates of, sorry, uh, one of the coordinate, the X coordinate of this point, and then the signature is produced as this the x coordinate of the point together with this weird expression that involves the hash of the message plus r of x uh, uh, times the secret key divided by k this this c that you have before so the things i highlighted in red are the things that should stay secret so the secret key should stay secret for natural reasons but also k is 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 it's very important the k stays secret during the signing process uh because if the adversary learns k then it's very easy to 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 recover the secret key now the output is R, X, uh, and S. The verification is uh, some equation that, that you can look somewhere else. Uh, but essentially what makes this very hard is that now you have to perform some nonlinear computation of two secrets, S, K, and K, right? So you need to divide, I mean, you have S, K, the secret key, and you need to divide it by K. And, and so far you only learn how to do uh, addition of secret uh, 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 values. So here I show you how to do threshold is say with two multiplication. So on the left hand side you have the scheme, uh, uh, the plain text scheme, and on the right hand side we are going to try to do this with with secure uh, uh, multiparty computation. So now we are doing threshold is ECDSA sign. So we want to sign M with some uh, 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 um, with some uh, secret sharing of the secret key. So the first thing we need to do is that we need to sample a random share K of the uh, 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 for this ephemeral key, and now we can compute. K times P, uh, uh, you know, within uh, uh, in the secret shared domain, so within the MPC domain, and then we can open the result Rx and Ry so that everyone can learn Rx. Um, and now here there is a nice trick. Uh, 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 so so this is only used linear thing, so this was easy. But now here there is a nice trick. To do the inversion, we are going to take some random value x. We are going to multiply x into K. This produces some some uh, uh, random secret sharing Y. And now, I mean, since somehow this, this X is random, right? This X is masking this K. So, so you're now allowed to open, to declassify this Y, so everyone can learn Y, um, because this X is kind of masking K, right? So this Y contains no information about K thanks to X. So you can reveal Y. And now, since you have X in a box and, and Y in the clear text, you can do this linear computation X divided by Y. And if you follow the, 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 the computation, right, the x divided by y is equal to 1 divided by k, right? Because x is, is, is x and y is x times k, right? So x divided by x times k is 1 over k. So that's great. Uh, 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 so now we have 1 divided by k, which we need here. And now we can also compute the secret key divided by k by multiplying the secret key with the inverse of k. Uh, and that's needed to do the other rest of the computation. And I can bring all of these together into this computation of s which is done only using linear operations. So, so one divided by K times the hash of the message, plus this public Rx times the secret key divided by K, and now you can open S. So, so we choose secure, if, if you can do choose secure multiplication, now you can do uh, uh, ECDSA in a secure way. And this is thanks to this very nice trick of this inversion, because otherwise, you know, doing this inversion directly in the, in the 
secret shared domain will be a highly nonlinear uh, operation, right? So computing inversion is, is very expensive, but because of this nice open and, and divide trick, we can do it with only two multiplications. Um, how do we do multiplication with secret shared values? So, so if you had uh, uh, replicated secret sharing, uh, uh, you know, each party has two shares. Remember, x party one has x one has two, party two has x two has three, party three has x three and x one. So the goal is to compute z, which is the product, this product, right? X times y, which you can write like this. And if you open this product up, you get all of these cross products. And if you stare at this long enough, you will notice that P1 has all the pieces that are needed to compute this part, and P2 has all the pieces that are needed to compute this part, and P3 has all the pieces that are needed to compute this part. Um, so, so in fact, we can do this, this uh, uh, multiplication by doing uh, you know, some local computation, and then there needs to be one round of resharing of these values for security, but, but you know, the, uh, don't worry too much about that. Similarly, it's also possible to do multiplication using Shamir secret sharing. So if you have uh, Shamir secret sharing, remember that sharing meant uh, 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 putting data on polynomials. In this case, we have polynomials of degree one, so two lines. So if all the parties want to uh, uh, compute a product of X and Y, and they have X and Y in secret share format, they can all just simply locally multiply their shares. And this will give them their some points. Uh, and now there is a little problem, right? Because this, these three points are not on a line anymore. They are on a degree two polynomial uh, 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 because you multiply two lines together. So what you get is an equation of the form X times Y plus you know, some poly degree two polynomial H1 times alpha plus H2 times alpha square, where these H1 and H2 are functions of, of the original values. It doesn't matter which function they, they are. Uh, but what's important is that the, the, the degree zero coefficient is actually x times y. So the secret that you are looking at, the, the, the result we wanted to, 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 to find, it is actually sitting in the right place. The only problem is that this, this polynomial now is of the wrong degree. So if you want to fix this, you can just have every party reshare the result with the right degree, and then you can do a linear reconstruction in the shared domain. Uh, uh, and I'm running out of time, but you can ask me more about that uh, if you want. Um, so, so you know, I, I motivated all of these with threshold cryptography and threshold signatures, but in fact, I taught you how to do additional multiplication. And if you do additional multiplication, you can compute any function you want. Uh, you can describe any function in, as a circuit, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, written with additional multiplication and then some constants if you need. Uh, uh, and then you can, you know, you can do, you can secure evaluate any function with linear secret sharing. And here, what we mean is that, you know, uh, uh, some of the inputs to these circuits will be, uh, owned by Ali, some of these inputs will be owned by Bob, and all of the inputs needs to be secret shared because you should not learn any of the inputs, but you should also not learn any of the intermediate values because this might leak information. So in particular, it should be impossible for an adversary to learn the value of, you know, of any wire except the output wire, and it should also be impossible for an adversary to, to inject errors in this computation. Uh, I think this is this is the time ahead. So, so the takeaways from this very short lecture was that secret sharing based MPC can be used to securely evaluate any function. Um, in MPC, we have this nice property that linear operations are essentially always for free. You can just do them using local computation, which is very, very cheap. And multiplication requires some more work. And also the threshold cryptography uh, can be seen as a very as a special example of MPC, uh, uh, where you use MPC to compute on, on, on cryptographic keys, essentially, right? Where the function you want to compute, instead of being, you know, do we want to date each other or what is the gender gap or, or, or something like that, right? Where the function you want to compute are cryptographic functions like encryption, like, like signature uh, uh, algorithms or maybe decryption algorithms. And this threshold, threshold cryptography can provide uh, meaningful trade-offs between availability and confidentiality for key management. Uh, uh, and, and it's important to notice that many natural schemes like, you know, uh, SNOR or BLS or SA are in fact compatible with just linear secret sharing techniques. For others like uh, ECDSA, you need to work a little bit more, but, but, you know, it can be done. If you want more about this, you know, there are many basic topics I didn't cover in this uh, uh, half an hour lecture. And I mean, one of the main things I didn't cover is how do you do this if you only have two parties or in general, if you have N parties and you don't trust uh, uh, N minus one of them. So, so in that case, uh, you cannot do multiplication using this, uh, 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 you know, this kind of techniques I, I've shown before, which are very simple. You need to use some heavier tools. You need to use, uh, you probably need to use some public key uh, uh, technology. You need to use things like oblivious transfer or homomorphic encryption. Garbo circuits are also an important tool in, in, in secure multiple computation. Another thing, another thing I didn't talk about is what happens if, I mean, so far I only talked about privacy, but what about correctness? What if you know, what if some of the parties are corrupted and they try to, to deviate from the protocol and they want to 
things to fail. Uh, and there are technologies for that, you know, zero things like zero knowledge proofs or, or homomorphic max. And finally, there is also very active, uh, there is a lot of work on special purpose protocols for, for functionalities of, of uh, practical relevance, like private set intersection, but this you will learn about next week. So, so uh, you should be covered on that. If you want to know more about some of the other things, you can Google my lecture on cryptographic computing. And if you cannot find them, just drop me an email and I'll be happy to, to share them with you. Um, in terms of research, uh, I think, I mean, of course, there is, you know, there is a huge amount of research in this area. But I think some of, if I had to mention two of the main uh, uh, area, of research, uh, area of research now, one is, uh, in general, for secure multiparty computation is how to do MPC using sublinear communication. Uh, uh, and here I mean sublinear in the circle size. So the techniques I showed you before, essentially for every multiplication, parties need to communicate. Uh, and the question is, how can you do this using less than, than this amount of communication? Can, can, we, can we do secure computation with, with lower communication? And in this world, there are like some of the keywords are like pseudo-random correlation generators, function secret sharing, homomorphic secret sharing. Those are some advanced techniques that are very uh, promising in this area. In terms of threshold cryptography, I think that uh, uh, probably one of the main challenges we have these days is to do threshold cryptography for post-quantum schemes. So all of the schemes I talked about before were, will be broken by quantum computers. And if you want to thresholdize post-quantum algorithms, uh, it's a bit harder because they are less uh, clean. There is always, I mean, there is either noise in things which are based on lattices or, or things that are based on other assumptions. They, have, they don't have this nice linear structure that, that things like elliptic curve-based cryptography has. And therefore, it's a bit harder to do them in, in threshold. So, so, so this is definitely something that, that people are looking at uh, right now, and, and it's going to be an active area of research for the next few years. So that's all I had, and I'm happy to take questions.